Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us, I get to present to you the Fortnite Battle Bus designed by my brother Charlie. It is built to minifigure scale. It's got a high level of detail and it's the first model that uh, has been designed in our web store that is specifically meant to be hung from above. Perhaps you don't have to guess the utility of that feature. It actually works very well. And before I jump into all the details of this model, of which there are quite a lot, I do want to say that if you wanted to build this and have this model for yourself, you can get the instructions at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase is a PDF step-by-step -step building guide, as well as a digital parts list for ordering your pieces online. Included on top of this is a PDF for printing out stickers. If you want to have a higher level of detail and also a recommended minifigure list for filling the bus with players. We've had an absolute blast designing models for the web store. I know my brother spent quite a long time on this particular design and it really wouldn't be possible without the support from you all watching. So thanks so much for tuning in and if you haven't had a chance to check out the web store yet it is linked in the description below. We've got some absolutely amazing designs from some of the top builders from all over the world. So anyway jumping back to the build it almost feels weird to uh, describe the universe to you guys because I'm pretty sure everybody watching this video knows what Fortnite is but for those that are not plugged into the gaming world or clicking on this video many many years from now Fortnite is the insanely popular third-person shooter battle royale with a distinct cartoony and playful style about it what's worked so well to make this game so widely played is the fact that it's got pretty decent shooting mechanics so serious competitive players can get a lot of enjoyment out of it while the bright colors dancing and wacky characters put parents at ease enough to let even younger kids play this shooter game when uh, oftentimes these kids wouldn't be allowed to do so I think that's really the linchpin that has allowed the absolute massive popularity of this game to take off. And on top of that, it's actually just a pretty fun game to play. At the beginning of each round, players jump from the battle bus that is slowly flying over the map. And it's kind of just this strange blue converted school bus. It's half school bus, half hot air balloon. It's got some gadgets and a few different pieces of vendor tech technology on the front and sides. And also maybe it goes without saying, but this is not the original battle bus but the updated version there's a few different pieces of technology that have slightly changed on it but of course the main distinctive feature is that those gray angled clamps or arms are facing in towards each other instead of the same direction like on the first version now I suppose it's worth just jumping into all of the baseline details first let me just tell you how big this thing is at minifigure scale it is 32 centimeters long or 12 and a half inches 17 centimeters wide or six and a half inches and 42 centimeters high 16 and a half inches now normally in these types of videos I like to talk about details first let's get straight into the functions this is the first model that's been designed in our web store meant to be hung from above so let's get straight into that in order for something like this to work properly the design from the very beginning had to be built around uh, the actual hanging function so Technic lift arms are connected to the very very top piece that sticks out from the balloon then you can see the trans clear Technic lift arm cutting through those flame pieces in the center and that connection goes through unbroken all the way to the very bottom of the bus which is the only thing that could really make this hanging function truly possible and on top of that it's not only just possible but it makes the entire model here extremely strong you'll see later during the handling section of this video that there is very little bending and bowing that happens between the large heavy build for the balloon and the bus at the bottom and it's fun for us here in the studio because this is such a large model and it's very easy to display like this you'll notice also as it spins there is a very different distinct build style between the balloon and the rest of the bus in order to get the nice equal sphere shape with those different color changes it made sense to use all the plates and go stud out 
on the four sides and the top, while the bus can be built with mostly smooth and sloping pieces to make up those little curves and angles on the roof and front of the cab. Also, you'll notice that the front of the bus cants forward ever so slightly. That is just the way the weight distribution works for this model. It's a relatively subtle lean, and I kind of like it leaning forward ever so slightly. It gives it a slightly more aggressive look or feel like it's accelerating forward. And the angle of this forward lean can be mitigated ever so slightly if you have a figure or two jumping out the back. I took a few different tries with a couple of different characters each. Uh, just sort of posing them in the back. One is jumping out and the other one is about to jump out of the back. This is a definite plus for being able to display this thing in mid-air. I only played around with just one trans piece and a couple of clips, but you could probably play around uh, quite a bit with pieces that could maybe extend the length of how far minifigures have jumped out, or you could have multiple figs jumping out at the same time. And that, I think, is probably the ultimate way to have this model displayed long term, at least for us here in the studio. Now, of course, I can't just leave the video at that. I would like to show you guys the rest of the features for this model. So let me show you uh, this thing getting lowered down ever so. It's not very graceful, but it does come to the bottom here, and it's time to start messing around with the interior. First things first, you take the model and put it on its side. You'll notice that it's really, really strong, like there is no bending or breaking towards that center point. And then in order to begin taking off the roof, first I like to remove uh, this little center axle piece. It's not totally necessary, but you can get your fingers uh, closer to those four pins that need to be removed just slightly more easily now. And after you've taken all four of these pins off, two on either side, you then have to detach the side clamps if you can. I kind of blocked the camera a little bit while I was doing it, but the four arms do need to be detached in some way, shape, or form. There's a lot of different places where you can do this. And then after that, with just a bit of wiggling here and there, you can slowly but surely break the entire roof off of the top of the bus. The tension here is actually decently high, even though the roof itself is only attached by what looks like I think eight studs in total. Not gonna lie, it's not like some super easy, very quick playable feature, but the reality is this thing has to be strong while it's being displayed up in the air, and there's no way to make an easily accessible interior and a super, super strong uh, build feature that cuts through the entire center of the model. But now that we're looking at the inside, you can see uh, several rows of seats. And this is based on like the concept art and like the videos where there's couches and there's like this weird computer thing in the back. Normally in the game, it is just rows of seats, but this is just a little bit more fun. There's a little bit more color, a little bit more variation that you can play around with with some of the characters. And speaking of which, let's add a bunch of characters to the bus. Starting at the front, we have the streamer driving the bus. I'm not going to say anything more or less about that. And then of course figures that don't have things sticking out of their back with like neck brackets can sit in the seats normally. And then figs that have larger pieces on them either around their bodies or strapped to their backs have to be sitting on the couch or leaning forward in some way away from the backs of the seats. These are also some of those recommended figures in the parts list. Of course there's like an endless amount of characters and or skins that you could add to be mini figures for the Fortnite battle bus, but these were just the ones that we had lying around here that I thought would work pretty well for this build. Now real quick, let me rearrange these characters. Some of the tops of the heads were sticking out. I don't think the roof would have been able to go back on properly, and also it's better to have some of their faces facing the window. Just makes it a little bit easier for all these figs to be seen from the outside. Now this totals nine figures on the inside of the bus, though you can fit more. Basically two full squads of four plus the driver. And even though the windows are tinted trans black, the variation of colors of characters on the inside still makes it pretty easy to see that this is a, a very populated bus. Now when it comes to reattaching the roof, first you put the entire chunk back on and you make sure the blue roof has studded into those eight different points on the top. And then after that, you'll see that the Technic lift arms are now sticking through all the way to the bottom and you add those four pins. That's really what 
locks this whole thing in place. And then from there, the rest of the attachments are cosmetic. You have the four arms that need to link back up. And you'll also notice that some of those flexi tubes also became a little bit loose during this process as well. So I might as well just jump straight into the handling because you see a lot of the handling already happening. I recommend picking up the battle bus by the balloon. It's not that the bus itself isn't strong, but the majority of the weight is actually there at the top. So it just kind of makes sense in terms of uh, picking up a piece and moving it around. Now the balloon does sway a little bit. Those Technic link arms are extremely strong, but they will bend and bow slightly, which means those flexi tubes on the outside that make up the string detailing actually detaches if you bend this thing around too much or really just move it around too much. You can just pop them right back into place. And then I'd say the best telltale sign or feature of this model strength is that when you pick it up right from the middle and you twist it to the side, there really isn't any bending or bowing away. You can see the whole bottom of the bus now. It's a, it's a pretty strong, strong build. Also the wheels can roll. There are the two uh, clamps on the back wheels, but if you were to take those yellow clamps off, the, the bus actually would roll around if you wanted to do that. You'll notice now now I'm just kind of swaying it back and forth, pushing it from side to side. This is by far the model's most vulnerable point. You can knock the bus over on its side. I did it one time before, and honestly, the balloon totally stays in place. Just a few of the smaller pieces break off on the sides. There's a lot of little detail extremities that you can move around that are clipped on by just one clip here or there. So those are pieces that you definitely have to be aware of, though there's no particularly difficult breakaway areas where if you were to break a small piece of the bus off, it's difficult to put back on. The gray angular arms and or clamps, I don't really know what to call them. Those pieces are connected in kind of a funny way. I think this is maybe the most finicky connection of all, though once again, they're not difficult to mess around with. Actually, you can see this one uh, became detached at some point, and you'll see that the wheel actually spins around when it's not attached to the gray clamp, but there it is, all connected again. And I've been handling the model here and there, so I'm just reattaching the strings. That's by far the, the number one thing that will keep happening when you pick up the model is those little stabilizing strings will pop out every now and then. Other than that though, the model is pretty darn strong, nothing too difficult to move around. And there you go, that's pretty much all the structural features that I think are really worth pointing out. It's a decently easy model to move. And now let's finish off with some close-ups of the model, some of the better features that I think are worth taking a closer look at. Like I mentioned earlier, there are some custom printable stickers or at least a PDF sheet that you can print out onto sticker paper, which is what we've done here. I did the graphics myself. It's just a handful of sticker details that I think enhance the model a little bit here and there. And then in terms of play or interactive features that I may have glossed over, there's a door that opens and closes on the side. Of course, the door opens and closes on the back. And then because one of those angular gray arms blocks the main passenger door, that actually is just a fixed build and it's not a piece that opens or closes. Around the blue flames, we have a satellite dish on one side with a high level of posability. Interesting little build technique with the grappling hook and or anchor piece in the center there for the trifecta of clips that come out. And then on the other side, we have that little weather blimp balloon that has a propeller that actually spins around if you flick it. Now up above towards the front, we have this little handle that's attached to what I think is a type of battery or generator and the hose is connected to this collection bucket in the front. It's a pretty standard feature uh, of the battle bus, probably one of the more recognizable pieces, I would say. There's a little hinged gray door at the bottom corner by the sign that I push in, but uh, that gray door can actually open, except I don't do it in this shot here. And with that, I think I've basically gone through all of the major points for this model. From the very beginning, the design of this piece was entirely wrapped around the idea that it was going to be very strong and able to hang from the ceiling. And frankly, I don't feel there was any sacrifice to detail in order to get that structural stability to work well. Basically, none of the interior is hindered by the lift arm column that runs through the center. You can't really see much of the Technic structure in the middle of the flames, and only the tiniest half loop sticks out of the top of the dome in order to get uh, a wire to run through. This is basically the ultimate Lego Fortnite tribute piece that we could think of. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Hope you liked the video. Let me know what types of builds you'd like to see in the future. We absolutely love making these videos for you guys. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And we'll see you next time at Brick Ball.